this is my Bijou's. And I still use it. I brush my hair with it now and then just because it brings me close to my grandma. My Bijou. And I used it on my son, Kaleoha's hair, as a connection to his his great great grandmother. Yat eight ma son in Nishne. This is Navajo Grandma. We have a wonderful treat for you today. I'm going to introduce to you another one of my wonderful children, and this is my son, Kaleo Aloha, and he's so wonderful and precious, and he is going to be my model tonight. And how wonderful, he was so willing. In fact, he's supposed to be sleeping, and he's helping mother. He's a very busy person. So anyways, tonight we're going to be making what is called the Tsiye, okay? That is the Diné hair bun. And then I will introduce to you, this is the Tsiye Tsiye. This is what you tie your hair with. And that is again called the Tsiye. And we are going to use everyone, everything that everybody keeps asking and wanting, the uh, the hairbrush. We're going to brush his hair with this. This is going to be fun. Okay, first thing I'm going to have, Cleo will have turn around and we're going to brush his beautiful hair. Isn't this gorgeous? He's had hair down below his knees. Just gorgeous. So we just brush the hair out. What we never did before, but I'm going to do for right now, is we're going to put a hair tie in there. And the modern thing, okay? This is the modern <laughs> tigail. Long time ago, they didn't have these. So now we are going to proceed by tie, making one tie. Okay, so... Here is one tie. Now, Kalelo is going to hold that, and we've got to make this tight. Okay. And then, I'm going to brush this out perfect so that it's really nice and, and uh, brushed really well here. And then, I'm going to make the bun. Okay. This is the bun. And, if you want to give that to me. And we're going to tie this around, go around, and need to make this. All right. Why don't you hold that one more time? And then <clears throat> I will proceed to go the opposite direction. Okay. And oopsies, go around one more time. And we will tie it at this point. And the men's hair, you don't fluff out. You leave as is. Okay. So here we are. And I'm using uh, the Tsiye hair tie. Like I said, normally you fluff the hair out for the girls. The men you leave as it is. Okay, so we are done with that. And lo and behold, we have a tsiye. <laughs> so, I'm going to explain some of the different aspects of making a tsiye, a dene hair bun. And I'm going to go ahead and turn Kaleoloha around just sideways there. And According to the Diné tradition, the hair represents the rain. Nahatin. And when you brush your hair, your hair is a symbolism of your wisdom and all the learning, all in your head right here. And when you put it in a bun, you're putting your wisdom and, and clasping it and putting it to your head the respectful way of bringing your wisdom and tying it here. The string that we use, it represents the sunshine and it's called Shabbat Lol. And that's what, you know, the, the strings, how they 
float like the sunbeams. That's what this represents, and the hair represents the rain. The old way of doing the hair, you know, you blessed it, and the men never had short hair. My father's hair was way below his waist, and he had beautiful long hair. Now, eventually, when the Caucasian people and the white men came in the 1940s before World War II, my father's hair was shorn. Can you imagine having long hair and then all of a sudden you just in a crew cut or nothing? It was a shock and this also represents wisdom, the hair. And again, because this is where we hold our wisdom. Everything, you're not supposed to cut your hair at night, you're supposed to only cut at certain times, but even then uh, you're discouraged not to cut your hair. Because it is, it's like snipping your, your, your wisdom. You know, the story, the Bible story of Samson, those are the type of strengths that you have with your hair. And so this is, it's a sacred uh, blessing to have hair. Those are some of the things that I wanted to say about the hair. And you can go ahead and turn around. And like I said before, the men, when you make the seagate, you don't uh, fan out the hair. You just leave it as is. Now the girls, you fan their hair out and you make it, you know, broad and really fluffy looking. So that's basically it. We appreciate my wonderful Kaleoloha, my sweetheart. And again, one of my sons I love so much. And you're, in a, you're learning about my family. How wonderful. And he's meeting you, all the thousands. And so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And right now we will go ahead and wish you well and send you love and hugs like Grandma always does. And so we'll say hagone. Hagone. Very good. Thank you so much. See you in another video. Good night. This is Navajo Grandma, and I'm going to share a wonderful rug with you. This is as we do our genealogy, and we travel, and we try to find family members in, um, in the reservation, and we came upon my great-great-aunt. We kind of just bumped into her, and she kind of told me stories about me when I was little, and I always had sticks in my hair, and my hair was, you know, all rolled up. And she was saying, is that you? You were just a little runt, and your hair was sticking out, and it always had weeds in it. And your, your busy was always trying to keep your hair brushed well. And you never wore shoes. <laughs> they, they remembered way too many things. It was comforting to, to know that somebody remembered you. But while we were visiting, we met her brother's wife, who is another auntie, great, great auntie. And she was going blind, and I was telling the, the, the women, I'm looking for a weaver, because my mother was a weaver, and her mother was a weaver, and my mother was very wonderful. She was incredible. So everybody directed us, and we drove up on a hill, and we found my aunt, my, one of my great, great aunties. And, well, we bought a, a rug from her. She laid out some of the rugs that she had woven, but she said, I'm so sorry. She was saying in Navajo, she, she not then. She says, I can't see. And we just, you know, about fainted over the rug she had made previous. So then she says, you know what? I still can see a little. If you want, I can make you a rug. My heart almost dropped. I was like, yes. And so I told her I would pay her. And I did not know how blind she was. But she went on ahead and set up a loom, and she made this rug. She actually made two of them. I drew the design, and this is the design that I drew on a paper. And I told her I wanted her to make a rug like this. And so she went on ahead, and she was in her 90s, and so giving, and she made this. And I cried when I picked it up because I... I didn't realize the extent to her blindness. And she says, well, she says, I know you uh, appreciate it, and I did my best. 
you know, I, like I said before, the imperfections make us wonderful because no one's perfect. And that's why I love this. Oh, dear. Anyway, she, she created this crack. And you can see its imperfections, but because she couldn't see it all, it, it's just beautiful. And this is one of the last weavers in our family. And I gave one rug to my son, Kalealoha, who had his tea gale made, and I have the other one. I treasure the other one. And also, and this is another dear, uh, precious Bejo, this hairbrush. My, this is my Bejis, and it is so old. It's brittle, but you can still use it, the hair. It, it's wonderful on hair. And I still use it. I brush my hair with it now and then, just because it brings me close to my grandma. My biji. And I used it on my son, Kaleoloha's hair, as a connection to his, his great-grandmother. And that's why I brought this. And this is what means so much to me. And you can see the little, this has been here for how many years? It's a piece of cotton. In fact, they don't make cotton like this anymore. It's very, very strong, and it's lasted years and years, and I treasure these things. But I wanted to share that with you, and again, you know, these are wonderful blessings that we've been given as we remember our ancestors, and, you know, think about yours and what wonderful blessings that they can give to you. Uh, you might find their writings, you might find a book that they had or a picture they drew, maybe a shoe they used to wear. And to me, those are very precious. Uh, we keep them dear to our hearts. So before Grandma starts really crying, we'll finish, but it's, this is an extra special moment for us. And uh, my son, this is at my son Kaleloa's house, and his dear wife, who are so kind and they love this, and I know they appreciate it as this has made its home here, and it's very dear. So that's it.